No, we don't. I shot him in the bed. Guns out, guns out. This is my head. <laughs> I'm gonna work on that lap, bro. Flex some more. Warlord, we discussed what it means to ascend, to confront your frailties and limitations with not just determination, but with discipline and trust. We discussed that Warlord was not a gift, but a great burden that requires a profound sacrifice of which most simply are not capable. In this past year, you have learned Ascension's final lesson, that being a champion loses so much of the romance of being an underdog is colder and harder. People turn from fans to foes and root for your fall. It is easy to grow unfeeling and ruthless in the face of these new challenges. But you did not. You kept your second pack to me. You grew stronger. You held a lot. You ascended again. You have learned what it means to ascend in power. You will be granted the right of Knight of the Sword, far and away the most coveted title our society confers. <coughs> now, you must learn what it means to ascend in rank. A new challenge has changed much over the years. Edgar is changing. Gone are the days of sword knights being cruel and ruthless tyrants of the field of knighthood being a finish line where the victors resting on their hallowed laurels demand commoners to prove their basic human worth. The lessons of knighthood are best told through its trappings, the gifts bestowed on all new knights. There are more than swag, they are symbols. Knights of old were skilled horsemen spurring their steeds valiantly forth in the name of God and country. In Amphgard, the spurs symbolize travel. Our society has grown so vast that you cannot truly experience Amphgard without leaving the comforts of your own kingdom. Raven has packed his meager belongings in pursuit of sharpening himself. He's one not just at home, but in many kingdoms. Through his pilgrimage, he showed that winning merely a few tournaments by a handful of points is not enough. That a knight is not settled for what is merely sufficient. <clears throat> that a knight will journey far and wide, ingraining the martial lessons on his body and bring them home to those thirsty to follow in his footsteps. Knights of old were bound by the oaths fealty to their kings. This binding was the chain. Here, the chain symbolizes that same oath of loyalty and service to Amphgar, that the health of the game must come before things like petty internet squabbles and decades-old company rivalries. The chain symbolizes that others will walk in the garden of their diligent service. The passionate fighting and tournaments tills the soil and your continued training plants the seeds. A sword knight serves as the mark that other up-and-comers must surpass in order to attain a similar rank that drives the mountain higher. The third, and perhaps most recognizable symbol of knighthood is the white belt, a physical manifestation of the rank. In Amphgar, it is the beacon to players, a signal that says this is a person that is skilled in their arena and can be trusted. A 
a sword knight's belt is a blank check written to every aspiring warrior that you will lead the way to their ascension, that you will bleed beside them to help them transform with compassion and understanding. <laughs> the final symbol of knighthood is the sword. A knight's blade is his power. Knights of old used their swords as quills to write history and as oars to steer the course of the future. So too is your sword, your power, to change other people's lives. The path you've walked, Raven, to reach this day has filled you with an uncanny courage, a sense of daring that will aid you in hard times and high goals throughout all areas of your life. As you well know, you must use this power you have earned to help others find that same courage. This power is the cornerstone of knighthood. It is the sole purpose of the right. Raven, are you ready to accept the office of sword knight. I am. <laughs> In the name of the rising wind, of Adgar, I dub thee, Knight of the Sword. Rise, Sir Raven the Swift.